Hi, my name is John Peters, and today I'm going to build a small tabletop easel. Now, I'd originally designed these easels for these little framed paintings that I make, but it turns out that they're pretty good for holding the iPad or any kind of tablet. And I also like them for these paintings that aren't framed. Sometimes when I'm working on a painting that's not finished, I'll put it on the easel, and that way I can just look at it and decide what else I want to do to it or whether or not I want to frame it. Anyway, this is a fun woodworking project. It's really not too difficult, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Now, it's a very simple design. The easel is made of three pieces. You have what I call the shelf, the back, and the support. And now this easel is made of sapili, and I use that wood because that's what I had hanging around the shop at that time. The easels I'm going to make today are going to be made out of quarter sawn white oak. I'm going to build 12 of these small tabletop easels. And one of the first things that I like to do before I build anything is make a cut list. And because I'm building 12, and there's basically made up of three parts, I have 12 backs, 12 of what I'm calling the support, and 12 of what I call the shelf here. Now you may also see that the material that the easel is made of of is thinner and it's actually a little bit lighter than a half of an inch so the first thing I'll need to do is start to resaw my material. I'm going to start with milling the wood for the support piece in the back here and now this board is just a little bit over 13 inches long and because the pieces that I need are only six and three eighths if I resaw this at a half of an inch and then cross cut it I'll get four support pieces out of this one board. I'm using five quarter stock for the support and for the back and because five quarter actually measures one and an eighth if I resaw my material at half of an inch that will allow for the eighth inch saw kerf and I should end up with two pieces that are about a half of an inch thick. Next I'll raise the saw blade up a little bit higher than half the distance of the wood and then I'll run the material through the saw, flip it, run it through again, then this piece will fall away, and I'll take the piece that fell away, flip it over, and also run that through the saw. Now I'm going to mill this part of the easel, and this is the part that I refer to as the shelf. I'll get this piece of wood from a piece of 8 quarter that I've had hanging around the shop for a while. First I'll run the material through the saw at an inch and a half, then I'll flip it and resaw it at 5 sixteenths. Now that I've got all my parts cut to width and thickness, I'm going to run them through the sander here. Now that's a wonderful tool to have and I understand most people don't have one, but if you're going to do any kind of production, it's a great tool to invest in. Even if you don't have a thickness sander, it's still better to sand your parts before you cut them to length because it's easier to sand a board that's large than it is one that's small especially if you're using a palm sander, there's more surface area for the sander to rest on. Whenever you're resawing material on the table saw, it's very common to get burn marks or blade marks on your material. And this is where this machine comes in really handy. Take a look at how this board gets cleaned up. Now I'm ready to cut all my parts to length. I've put a piece of tape on my fence so I only have to measure once. Now I've got all my parts cut. 
the support piece, the back, and the part that I'm calling the shelf. And what I need to do now is cut the angle in the support piece. And I'm going to do that on a table saw with a sled that I've made. I just made this sled for my table saw. Now this is designed to run in the groove that's already milled into the table saw top. And so if I run it through the table saw, anything to the right of this three quarter inch piece of ply with the top of the sled will be cut off. So now what I'm going to do is take the easel that I have, trace the line of what the support is, put a few pieces of wood here, and that will hold the support piece while I cut the material. Well, I've decided to make a few changes to the original design. Uh, one thing, I felt that this looked a little blockish, so I've cleaned up the edge a little bit by cutting a 45 degree, and now the edge of the easel comes to about an eighth of an inch point and then cuts back at 45 degrees. The back support, I used a round over bit on my router just to soften that edge a little. To get the 45 degree angles on the back of my easel, I'll first cross cut with the chop saw at 45 degrees and then I'll rip a 45 degree angle on the table saw. For the back support, I'm going to use my router with a small roundover bit. I use the same roundover bit to round over the bottom of the part that I'm calling the shelf. Now all my parts are milled and sanded. I sanded everything with my palm sander using 120 grit silicone carbide paper. I've set up this jig to make a more efficient assembly. I have a piece of scrap wood here that I've cut on the table saw and that is the exact center of the back and I'll mark that with a light pencil line. Now the support piece, I'll put in the jig here, and when the support piece is in the jig, the back will go with the edge against this outside piece of plywood, and then I'll nail through the back of the easel into the support piece. I want to make sure that the bottom of the support is flush with this bottom edge of the back. Now I'll flip the easel over and I'm going to attach the part that I refer to as the shelf. I've placed another block of wood on my jig and if I take the edge of the back of the easel and lean that up against the block of wood and then take this part that I call the shelf and that pushes up against this block of wood that'll give me the same reveal on either side of the easel always remove any glue before it sets up and that's about it now I should add that when I'm nailing the back to the support I use an inch long nail and I like to attach all the backs to the support before I attach the shelf because when I attach the shelf I switched nails to a three-quarter inch long nail. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.